MK and today is Mixed Media Mayhem and I am so super stoked to be recreating this amazing layout by Rebecca Moore who did it for Bramble Fox. So I've pulled out a bunch of things that uh, might show up, might not. So I've got this wood piece that I've already I uh, I don't know colored and whatnot um, and then I've got some cut files that are also from my cut file shop I um, <laughs> have been dying to use that large one just haven't been able to put it on a layout yet so let's see if we do this one I also have some spectrum uh, 49 and market pieces this one here is the acetate pieces that I'm almost used up and then I plan on doing a flip flap on this layout so I'll only be working with one of these photos I have the exact same inks that Rebecca used I watched her video like six times to finally figure out how she did this I also have these amazing paint sprays they are phenomenal they're from the dollar store you guys actually it's a dollar 25 store now but go pick yourselves up some they're awesome and I have some brand new even still in the packaging um dilutions inks in browns I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Anyways, I also pulled out my faux stitching stamps by 49N Market. If I remember, the link will be down below for those because I do believe they are still available. And just like Rebecca, I pulled out the exact same Tim Holtz stamp that she used as well. I have this gorgeous rice paper by Stamparia that I absolutely love putting in my uh, grungy layouts. I love working with this rice paper. Now, I'm not sure why it's called rice paper because it looks and feels and acts just like mulberry paper, um, but they call it rice paper. So anyways, I'm going to cut my photos down to 4x4, four four, which actually it's going to be just a hair under 4x4, four four, so that way I can put them in a 4x4 four four flip flap. And just like Rebecca, I am going to uh, make pencil lines around the photo, around my main embellishment over in the upper right hand corner, and then make a square combining all of these elements. So the first line that I did, I didn't even pay attention to where I was on the side of like from, you know, how far over I was from the left side. So had to erase and restart because it's like, oh, that's not going to be very square-ish. So I'm just guessing here, trying to figure out where my lines are going to be. Um, I'm not even measuring. Honestly, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, draw a blueprint. And I intend to leave all of these lines in my layout because I think I absolutely love blueprints. So I think that that will add to the mixed media portion of it. I'm going to pull off this one stamp. This is the exact stamp huh, that Rebecca used. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that she, um, that she did. So she took her Mermaid Lagoon Oxide ink and stamped two pieces um, in either corners. And I'm trying to make sure that they extend far enough out to where um, they, they will stick out from behind the embellishment is, is, and the photograph um, is where I'm trying to go with that. Now the photo that I outlined doesn't have the border around it yet. So it's actually going to be a little bit bigger than what I drew with my, um, with my uh, pencil. So I'm okay with that. And the lines that are going to be extended, I think are going to be pretty cool. Okay, then I'm lightly tap, tap, tapping in three different areas using my Distress Oxide in Mode Lawn. Now I didn't do the Distress Ink because I felt like it was going to be a little on the too dark side. Um, so I went with the Oxide Ink um, just so that way it would show up on this uber dark paper. Um, I'm just using the backside of a pre-printed Halloween paper yet again as my craft paper. I'm trying to use up what I have before going and buying new craft paper. And I love, oh my gosh, thank you, Rebecca, for showing us this technique. I have to say this was the first for me to try this technique. I'm taking just a normal little sponge um, that you get at the craft store for painting and, and dabbing and all that good stuff putting my ink on a block, spraying it down, watering it down, and then sponging that color onto my paper. However, the really cool part is that it mixed and blended and patinaed my two colors that I already stamped on there. I loved that effect. I loved what I got out of 
that really cool technique. So I was super stoked with that. So thank you, Rebecca. That was so cool. Okay, so instead of adding black to my layout, I'm actually adding brown. I, this is the staple on my desk, ground espresso, and it's just the Distress ink because I wanted it to be a dark dark brown. So the Distress or the Distress Oxide ground espresso actually comes out a little paler, um, kind of a pastel-y brown, if that's ever a thing, um, compared to the Distress ink um, when it's stamped on dark paper. Okay, then I'm taking this amazing paint spray, you guys, dollar store, all right? I can't believe this. This came from a dollar store. I can't say that enough. Um, $1.25 now, but still... <laughs> It's just, it fascinates me, really. It's so vibrant in color, so textured, so fabulous. Oh my gosh. And so far, I've only found it in the blue, the green, the red, and the yellow. Uh, I haven't tried the uh, the red yet. I think I did, maybe. I'm not sure. It's more like a corally red. It's not red red. It's not blood red. Um, so, and then I'm taking my Distress, uh, or my Delusions. This one here is Melted Chocolate. It is fabulous. It will dry a little lighter than what I see here. So I've got melted chocolate on now, and then I'm going to put desert sand in there just for a two-tone effect. I wanted um, just a, a small little two-tone. In fact, you don't even see it. The desert sand or the um, uh, melted chocolate shows up a lot better. And while that is off drying, because the paint blobs do take a while to dry, you can use your heat gun if you don't mind the lines. Now, what I mean by the lines is that as it dries, it creates a, a crusted line and then it goes into a smaller pool, creates another crusted line and another and another. So if you want that, you can use a heat tool. If you don't, let it dry natural and then it will just dry. It, I don't know what the difference is. I'm not sure if it's because you're superheating it with the heat tool or not. I'm, I, I'm not the drying expert, but um, I do know that there is a huge difference to um, letting it air dry as opposed to letting it heat dry. So, or forcing it to dry, I should say. All right. So then while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to go ahead and cut this rice paper. Cuts beautifully in my guillotine cutter. I haven't tried it on my uh, green machine. I'm, it's, uh, it's a caterpillar, caterpillar, caterpillar. <laughs> I knew that. Um, I haven't tried it yet on that because it is the perfect size to just use it in my guillotine. So, and when I can, I try to use my guillotine for everything um, as opposed to the larger cutting machines. Yep, that's it. Uh, so anyways, pulled out this ginormous cut file and decided that it extended a little bit too far down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and cut it so that way I can shrink it down and, and hide the pieces below um, behind my, my photo. And then that way I still have all of this beautiful mixed media that I did. And now I'm just going to work on all of the embellishments. I'm going to put, us, put off to the side what I did not end up using. So there was a cut file I didn't end up using. And then there is also a uh, that wood piece that I pre-embellished or pre-colored um, that I also did not feel I needed. So the reason why I didn't put any wood pieces on this is because I didn't want it to have a lot of depth. I didn't want it to have um, a lot of dimension on this layout, even though it does end up looking like there's a lot of dimension. And I do end up pop upping, pop, pop, uh, foam, foam dotting. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, that upper piece of, uh, of gear that whole embellishment ends up being popped up. Uh, but I don't remember if I pop up the bottom. I don't think so. I can't remember. Hmm. Yep. Anyways, going through all of my acetate pieces, I thought at first the acetate pieces would show up um, like vibrantly on this dark brown and instead they almost disappear. Now, looking straight at this layout, I have to tell you guys that I can see a lot more of what is going on than you guys can looking straight down. I'm looking at slightly an angle and they show up beautifully. However, the straight up and down view that you guys are seeing now, it's almost like I'm putting ghosts. Like, what is she doing? I see her hands moving, but she's not doing anything. I'm putting leaves down um, that just aren't showing up quite yet. Okay. Then I went and uh, pulled out the die cut pack that I used, I believe a few days ago. 
on um, an embell on some embellishments, and I pulled them out to pull in a little bit more. Um, I wanted words and things, or at least a word of some sort. I wanted. I wanted some things on here and the leaves just weren't doing it for me. I wasn't too sure if I wanted to add butterflies or not. Um, this, this is just a photo of the plaque that, um, that tells you where the Palisade Lodge used to be. Like this is the, the home of the Palisade Lodge number 20, um, which by lodge, it means of the mining um, the mining lodges. So then it also lists the Elko Lodge, the Battle Mountain Lodge, the Eureka Lodge. It lists all the other lodges that are um, in existence today, but this one used to be the Palisade one of um, the Freemasons. And so it, um, it was uh, kind of like a memorial type of deal in the ghost town of Palisades. So you knew where the lodge stood. I've already done the layout for the lodge. Um, it's the main cabin that everybody went in. It was kind of like the... Um, uh, the community cabin where well, everybody had their, their, um, their huts to go home to, or their, um, their, uh, mm, what are they called? Their dormitories, I suppose. Their, their little holes in the, in the mountains <laughs> to go home to. But then they also had this, um, this main lodge where they, all the eating was taking place. All of the, um, camaraderie was taking place. You know, they played, um, they played cards. They told stories. They sat by the fire, all that stuff. Um, before going home for the night and going to their bunks is pretty much all um, all that this lodge was. And so because it's barely there, there is um, a broken foundation, um, the, the stove, you know, the piping for where the uh, fireplace used to be, um, the pipe for the for the water that ran into the cabin um, it is still there ish. It's in pieces. Um, there's certain things there that you can see, uh, that, that used to be, but the, the main portion is gone. And so they put up this plaque to let you know that that's what that was. And so I took a picture of the plaque. Um, I took a picture of the mound that it was mounted in. And then I also took a close up so that way I could see what, um, you know, like what it actually said, you know, and, and be able to read it later, later in life. Um, and so, yeah, then after I pulled out all of the die cuts that I was interested in, I didn't want to use a ton because I didn't want to take away from, you know, what, uh, well, for one, I didn't want to use too many for the, um, you know, for the mixed media. I didn't want to cover up and extend past the mixed media. I love the little bits that are sticking out. I absolutely love how this looks right now. And then I also pulled out these die cuts, which are new to me, um, or I guess they're new to 49 and Market. I'm not really sure, but they are the Spectrum Noir, or I'm sorry, that's wrong, Spectrum Sherbert Tidal Wave Laser Cut Embellishments. And they're uber thick, uh, in all honesty, I wasn't, when I feel them, I'm thinking, is there two? Because they feel super, super thick. Um, and popping them out was okay. I did have to cut some nubbies off of some of the pieces, but not all. And I think most of them were because of where they were located. They stuck out like sore thumbs, whereas the other ones were just on the tip of the leaf. So it matched um, the form of the leaf. So it didn't really matter. All right, so here I am going to just pop up the last little bit of um, my embellishments, and I believe this is it. So I'm struggling because I cut my fingernails off, so I'm struggling taking the backs of the foam um, backer off. Um, so it does take me a bit. Um, but during the summer, I, I'm out in, you know, I, I play out in the dirt, and so the fingernails are, are quite, uh, uh, quite non-existent during the summer. <laughs> So uh, I try to keep them short so that way they don't look nasty and dirty in the videos. All right, going to add a little bit of splatter on the top. Um, I just took, brought in the blue and then I'm bringing in the brown, but the brown, I didn't want it to go everywhere. So I'm being a little bit more cautious than um, I am, than I was with the blue or than I was when I first brought out the brown. And uh, that is it. This is the layout that I have for you guys today. I am so uber super excited about how it turned out on this craft cardstock. I do wish that I would have extended my square out a little bit, like made it a little bit bigger. So that way it stuck out a little bit past all of the embellishments, but I still really, really like how it turned out. I am, I am stoked with, um, uh, with the vibrancy of the color. Now I do have to tell you guys that because this is not alcohol, 
um, within these paint bottles. This is actual paint watered down. I won't wipe them off my acetate. They will dry on that acetate um, if I let it. Uh, and then it will just be an amazing little blob added to all the rest of that dimension. So anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really, truly appreciate it. Be sure to check out everyone else that is playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem. Remember, this is the last Friday of the month, which means we have a bunch of other people ha hanging out and playing along with us. So make sure you check out them as well. I have all their links down below. And yeah, I will see you guys all later. Bye.